It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown, as always. I have the ladies. Hello, how are you guys Mariah doing? Mariah is back. <laughs> how are you guys doing? How is everything? Welcome back. We missed you. I know it was just miss... five days, but it felt like five months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I feel, I feel loved and appreciated. Oh, yeah, thank, no. you, thank you, thank you. How have you been? Great, have you been great. To, All week we're studying, with? reading. Lots of presentations, my entire team. It's great. It's just good to be well, among you. But you, did they push you to do the presentation? No, all of us had to. Every oh, single individual. Person, oh, no, everybody had to. And their group assignments. It was really hectic. I mean, by, by Friday, by Saturday, we were spent. Like, we were talking on Sunday morning. Yeah. Everybody was still on their bed. <laughs> we, didn't, we couldn't stand up. I then had two parties on that Sunday. So I had to force myself. Actually, God's girl, she had to I had to that. force <laughs> myself. <laughs> I went to party, party one. It was my cousin's introduction, the, the Lakwa Fuja. So we had this own introduction. I had to just, I was there for like an hour. I left and I went to party at Muson Center. Pastor BC Oloyo was 60, mm. he's 60. And uh, I was at the Muson on, on Sunday. So it was hard fun, it was nice, yeah. it was nice. So you balanced off, you know, yeah. work hard. Playing hard, you know. So <laughs> how you guys find doing? That balance is important. Good. My husband ran the ten kilometer mile. Oh, <laughs> yeah. nice. See, Madam said I should bring the medal and wear the yes. medal. Yes, I think I'm the one that ran the. Medal. He ran for the family. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Not just him. Also, my children's older sibling. So, um, their older sister and brother also ran with them. So it was also the, whole the family. Lunga family. Oh yes, oh, well, well represented. That's right. Nice. <laughs> and books. also, I heard that um, the Nigerians that won. The 42 kilometer were from are from Plateau State. A man and his wife both won right. from okay, Plateau okay. State. So, so we're well <laughs> represented all <laughs> round. <laughs> nice, fantastic. How are you doing, Nima? I'm just grateful to God for life. Mm. Straight to talk. Uh, you don't want to share the uh, testimony. Just thanking God. We thank God. I went to Ibadan um, to work and I came back. And Tukwe, I think you're really good at God. this thing. Yeah. I saw the two that you did, yeah, and I think, I mean, I think, I, I really feel like, like Nigeria, does have, they've not even seen the talent yet. So yeah, see I your want, work. yeah, I want, I want to open a new Instagram page, Niger Bro Boss, you know. Yeah, like, I think, I think you got that thing covered. Make all the noise. I think Brown you got that boss, thing covered. You know? I mean, everyone you've done has been perfect. I can't wait to, for you to do mine. You know, I, I, Glory I can't to wait. God. You're doing, you're doing well. So it was yeah. not, a, it was not a waste. It was a good yeah, investment. Yeah, it was a major investment. I don't know, I think I was like, oh, you ah, spent so much no, no, money. Fantastic. I'm so rich, and then fantastic. you spent yeah, the money. Fantastic. Well done. And so uh, YK is in the UK having a ball, and as she's there, she had a granddaughter. Did you guys announce that? Yes. Oh, oh fantastic. Friday. Oh, great. And then she's hanging out with people, and there's, Since I think there's um, so a few fans. There's a Tunde and Binkpe yes. in the UK. We just wanted to say hello to you guys. Thank we you. We love you. Thank you for your support. Thank, thank you very Aww. much. YK told us that you guys are great fans of the show, and we just wanted to say thank you for being such a good support. Okay, we're going to go on a break. We're going to breeze through the front pages when we come back. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Right, we're going to start with the nation. 2023 president, Northern uh, Northern elders give conditions. Terrorism echoes to spend a billion dollars. House of Reps broke, says spokesman. CBN's cash policy mops up 855 billion naira from banks' vaults. Police squeeze Nigeria Jaga Jaga Kruna over his rent. A uh, picture here of uh, Governor Fayami of Ikiti State's 55th birthday. And a human interest story that really got to us. Man burns his son's buttocks and finger for stealing boiled fish. That was a really sad story indeed. Let's start with that story, Tokwe. Yeah, so very touching. I have two other stories, Mario. So okay, I let me just take on that. Yeah, so this father too. heated up a stainless steel plate because your son stole fish. When the stainless steel was red hot, he now made his son sit on it, Lord God. put his fingers in it, and then somehow the thing got to his mouth. Also. So he had the mud bound in his mouth, fingers, and, and that's your and, father. And the, and the gory picture were attached, and it is actually the biological Thank father. Thank God he has been arrested, and they're going to prosecute him. So what I, wanted, what I would like to add to that is that we've seen this growing up. I saw it growing up, corporal punishment for stealing, because we feel like we don't want to raise thieves. So parents do 
serious, grievous harm to their children because they want to ensure that the message sinks in. Some will cut their child and put pepper in it. They put pepper in the eye, pepper in the anus. All of this done by where, parents where because they, they feel like if I make it so terrible yeah. for this child, she will remember it or even remember for the rest of her life and it would never steal again. But it's not working today, guys. Moving on, let's take the one series. The House of Assembly is broke. The lower chambers, the House of Representatives, rather, said that the complaint came through um, the spokesman, Benjamin Kalu, said over the weekend that they've not got the funds haven't been released and they have been unable to carry out major functions of oversight and even um, they are unable to that the, the they observe that the financial problem um, is because the house is struggling they haven't increased their budget in 10 years and the cost of living generally has gone up in 10 years in Nigeria the, <laughs> they also complain okay, that have they have pending investigation mm. that they cannot do because they don't have the funds to They're do it. So we yeah. need to find the balance of, yes, we know that we, should, we don't want them being too rich, mm. but we also need them to be able to function. Right. And they, they, are, they are going to be collect salaries without being able to do what they're meant to do. So okay, let's move on. I was talk. going to take the Idris up to Karim's story, but let's move <laughs> on. The punch, I'm attacking personnel, Southwest governors to write IG for gun license. Bart winner stabs footballer to death in Lagos. Zamfara Health Board uncovers 80 ghost doctors and 39 nurses. Convicted army officer escapes from court premises. Lassa fever kills four in Kogi. Nine cases recorded. Six worshippers die, nine injured in Oshun Road crash. Police hunts for OOU, um, Olavisi, I think, mm. lost graduate kidnappers. Buhari has failed to pilot Nigeria's affairs. Disco's TCN demand another tariff hike and will no longer watch our people being slaughtered, says Ohanese. Okay. Let's start with, yeah, go ahead. Human Nima. interest. So this young man, um, Ifai Inchenzu, was stabbed by a bar owner, um, Dennis Obiora. He owns a bar in somewhere in Laos, and Ifai had come with his friend Chinedu to have drinks, and the Chinedu was reported to have been smoking in their home, which um, Dennis wanted to stop, and then they had an altercation, and it just led to a fight. Chinedu was able to escape, and then Dennis jumped on Obi uh, Ifai, and, and before we knew it, he was dead. So the family is calling out for justice. He's been arrested. He's been moved to the state CID in Yaba. And the spokesperson for the police is saying that this is not what the Alausa Police Station can investigate. Right. It has to be properly investigated before we have. And that the facts in the papers are, is, is different from what they have so that they will investigate it. All right, properly. let's talk about the Amoteko uh, story. Who has that? Yes, I have the Amoteko as well. So the spokesperson for um, the Amoteko um, uh, in Oyo State, that's the AG in Oyo State, was saying that. After the whole paperwork for Amoteko is put together, they will come as a body and apply to the IG of police for a gun license to carry guns. That there are laws that empower people to have license, to apply for gun license to carry arms, and which Amoteko can come under, and several other laws like that to, to mm. apply I mean, to carry arms. I don't even want to comment on that. Let's I, 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 I don't think we need more guns. State Health Services Management Board did a verification and found that 80, they had 80 ghost um, mm. workers, doctors and nurses. And this is a part of the civil service that gets 20 million every month. So for them, this is a good thing. And they say that they'll continue doing these verification exercises until they're right. able to fish out everyone. Imagine how much they've saved for their state. Right. Right. Imagine the thinking out. you have um, help personnel and only yeah, you don't, don't, yeah, yeah, and yeah. don't actually. Daily Sun. Constitutional amendment, North South fight over state police and devolution of power. Picture of our president greeting former president uh, at the AU summit in Addis Ababa. Imo, primate Olabayo attacks Father Mbaka. Lagos residents sue NNPC AGF over explosion. What, are, what would end my fight with Emia Sanusi says Ganduje? Ohani says spits fire over insecurity. Who has the Ganduje story? I do. Mm. So um, the headline, sadly, it's, yeah, no, 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 it's, it's good. But he said so many important things. I wish that that's what, yeah. what the headline is. So he had gone for a, a, meet, a meeting to visit the president to just, you know, commemorate his name and thank him for how Kano State is going and everything. But also he was asked by news people. And one of the questions is, is OK, here you came here with your emirs and you did not come with Sanusi. How, what is, you know, what will help? rebuild this relationship and he just said well it's a constitutional issue and it will be solved but he said so many things he talked about they asked him about out of school children in Kano state he used to have one of the highest he says that they used to have a million but now they have four hundred thousand. and they have their names and their parents names and they're going to enroll them in school he talked about the armadury system also which is we they have over 200 uh, there's 8,000 there's 200 
what they will do is they might not put them into regular schools, but they'll make sure that they have maths and English as well, so that they're able to recommend entrance with other That's um, Nigerians. So there's so many other important things that he talked about. Beyond the sanitary. Yes. Okay. Uh, is saying that? Yeah, Onese is creating fire. They had a meeting um, at, the, it's called the Email B meeting, and the President General of Ohanese, that is Chief John Nina Umodo was speaking up against the insecurity challenges. The entire meeting was based on how to secure the people of um, the people in the south southeast, and he said that they will not stand by while the Igbos are being slaughtered. That they are going to ensure that everything that could be done is done. That's the spitting of fire, and they are also trying to work on putting on a council together to engage the Ohanese governors immediately on how to prevent further. And they also security. said they're not going to adopt the Amotekun model, but mm. they have their own model, mm. which is different. Moving on out to Vanguard, why we are against Amotekun. Is at Mieti Alla. Six died in auto crash on return journey from pilgrimage. Insecurity southeast to name joint security outfit soon, says governors. Imo Guba dispute. Ihedio has six fresh Supreme Court panel. And forum calls for withdrawal of hate speech bill. Okay, so I read this um, Ihedio okay. story. And he has been able to get the Supreme Court to, they've made an application for the Supreme Court to set aside the judgment for. Uh, and, Dima, and uh, we're trying to see if they can totally nullify that that um, okay. that case and then start a fresh one. Mm. So it's going to be as if we never really even uh, um, went to the Supreme Court in the first place. So I didn't even know they had that option. But no, they, they have. They filed, they filed only the Supreme Court have the powers to, to review their judgment if, yes, if so new facts. We'll see how that, that goes. Okay, the major airline. Yeah. So the Yeti yeah. airline is saying that why they were against the Amoteku idea in the beginning was because they felt it was an idea to flush out the Fulanis and the Ondo State. Um, Attorney General B, um, the yes, Southwest Governors Forum, the State Governor, Otimi Akeidolu, has responded that that is not the idea. It was sim simply a security move. I'd like to say that I don't expect the Mieti Allah to play mischief. When we say that there is a crime being committed and we, they colorate it with a tribe, we go against them. When they find a, a way to fight that crime, don't colorate the solution again with another tribalistic comment saying that, you know, it's an idea to flush out the full and I don't think Let's move on to the Nigerian Tribune. Coronavirus, why Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa must be vigilant, says WHO. Coco, undo critical to non-oil exports, says Awulawa. Call me at to order Yoruba Koya tells Buhari. Southeast um, House of Assembly to enact law backing region security outfit. Buhari vows to resist use of AU funds to subsidize United Union, um, UN, sorry. Uh, revenue, population, growth, Nigeria's problem, not debt. And presidency tackles NEF over claims that Buhari has failed on, econ on, on security. Okay, let's start with the major, Coco, okay, major headline. Yeah, major headline. So, um, coronavirus. Yes, coronavirus. It's, uh, we're being warned, Africa as a continent is being warned to be vigilant, that even though we do not have any reported cases, but because of our constant Interruption. interactions with China, we need to be careful. We have um, over 100,000 Chinese firms in, on the continent. There are about a million Chinese nationals that live in African countries. There are over 80,000 African students in China. So obviously there's constantly back and forth. So they're asking us to be just more vigilant. Just and there's a rumor that it's happening I was going around over the weekend that uh, they spotted some Chinese who were reacting like they have some kind of symptoms of coronavirus somewhere. And the police, the commissioner of Lagos, the health, the commission, um, the health commissioner in Lagos State has said that it's a rumor okay. that no, none of that is happening in Lagos State. Um, so I want to take the cocoa story. The chief executive of the Nigerian export Promotion Council, that Mr. Shegu Awolowo, had a meeting in Ondo State with the governor, um, um, Governor Rotimi Akiridolu, and he, he, the, the aim of that meeting was to um, engage the governor to, to increase and support cocoa farmers, saying that having non-oil revenue started with cocoa, cocoa, cocoa is huge, and Ondo State is the highest producer of cocoa in Nigeria, and so cocoa would be a huge sum of um, way to bring in foreign exchange and provide um, a bit of cash flow into Ondo State. And the governor said they are, they're already working. They have a policy to engage cocoa farmers and increase production. They also have Ore Industrial Park where they are doing cassava, ethanol production, bitumen production, and revitalizing the oil palm plantation in Okitipupa so that Ondo is at the forefront of trying to create non-oil-based revenue and so on. Okay, well, our final paper is Daily Trust. Let's take the major headline says that yeah. crisis brews as ABU uh, council asked VC to leave. What's that about? I know that's your school, right? Yes, that's what my happened? school. So, um, there's, this is a weird story. The um, VC, 
Professor Ibrahim Garba is being asked by the Governing Council to start his terminal leave, even though he, his tenure ends in April. And um, he's wondering, so the question is on both sides, is this, are they advising him to go on terminal leave, which in that case you can't force someone to go on terminal leave, and he's leaving anyway at the end of, um, by April, why is he being forced out? Has he done anything to be disciplined for? And if it is, if he's done something wrong, can he know what he's done wrong? Right. So it's just tension back and forth, and I wonder why you would force someone to leave before okay. their tenure Unfortunately, expires. Unfortunately, that's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we'll go through a hot topic. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So the National Examination Council has released the results of 2019 uh, November-December results for the Senior School Certificate Examination and only 48% of our students reportedly actually obtained credits in five subjects and above. Report has it that 52% of them failed to obtain five credits, as NECO records the highest exam malpractice. Hmm. What are your thoughts on this? Please give us your view, especially if you have a parent and your, 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 your ward just actually took an exam. Let us know your reviews and what happened. You can call us on 070 8066814. You can also tweet us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourVTVC so we can read your tweets. So this was a bit bothersome because they're saying that it's the highest, because I think it increased from, from 12,000 or so to 17,000 mm. cases this past examination. And that in itself is bothersome. And as a parent, you begin to worry, okay, what are exactly the measures that are put in place to ensure to reduce um, examination malpractice, especially when 52% didn't do so well. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts when you read this report, Mariam? Okay, so for me, the thing is, I think um, the number of Nigerians not doing well, uh, Nigerian students not doing well has sort of increased over time. It just shows an increase. But what it shows to me is not necessarily that the education system is falling every year, which it is, which of course we know our education system is really struggling right now. But I think it shows more that the um, administration of the examination board is doing a better job at um, picking out the data of our students, what they do, how they do. So it's not that because in 2019 and then and 2018, the number is quite high. And I do not think it's just because the standard of education dropped in one year but that because we're taking the data more seriously right now. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it shows that um, many people are unable to get away with just cheating their way through exams. So we're able to catch more people. And because we're catching more people, we're catching this, it's almost a syndicate. They say we have mercenaries coming in to write for people and they've been catching a lot of them recently. So you have less people being able to So in this situation where people actually come and write exams for, I mean, I mean can you imagine? That, that is really, and parents are actually aware of this. They pay parents for this are service. involved in this. They pay for the service. I mean, mm -hmm. I was surprised. I thought it was something the kids just find a way to do amongst themselves. But from the reports I read, parents actually pay for these services. Yeah, so it's a cycle, you know, we do, there's corruption going on in our exam system. And we thank God that the examination board is taking a step to make sure it stops. And so when it takes a step, what will happen is that it weakens all the other um, all they're links. All Maryam is just giving us data. I'm not sure they're taking any really steps. No, no, no. The steps, they, 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 they have to take arresting. a step yeah, to yeah. curb. Right. And that's why they found the numbers. Mm. That's why we were able to catch them. Because if there wasn't any step taken, these people would have done what they usually do. And, and they probably would have passed. But because there's, there's, um, the steps have been taken and it's followed, followed through. I, when I was writing my own um, NECO and YX and all of that, we, we, there was, of course, failure. But the, 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 the real reality is our parents were more involved, more than what we have now. So parents see children that they feel are struggling, and we have parents either willingly let you pay for you to get your exam done at special centers. Or they, yeah, maybe for parents pay. No, my time, your parents paid for you to get your exam done at special, there were specific schools that are called special centers. You pay specific money for those schools. Special bill in that you have teachers that will teach you what to write. Oh, really? Yes, the teachers will tell you what to write. They take you through the process. And they can even write for you. So you're guaranteed you'll pass. That used to happen then. Now, and, but, but, but we had that in se selected areas. They worked on it a bit. But now we have cases where people would come into the exam hall 
to write exams on behalf of the child. I, I'm happy the government is highlighting this, and I wonder what kind of parents would do that. You're setting up your child for failure long term. You're, you're not giving your child the right values. What kind of adult are you raising? Mm. It's worrisome. If a child fails, let the child fail and grow through that process by studying again. So the, I think that we should penalize parents also, especially if the parents are the ones funding these exams. But until they penalize those people, we will not be able to solve the problem holistically. So our examination practice law also covers parents who aid and abet the children in exam practice to go to be convicted as well. So it, we have really grown beyond the days when my, we had magic centers. Mm. Mm. We had um, um, uh, people come in to write exams, people paid to write exams. We, in fact, you do not have to show face at all. Mm -hmm. you, people will write your exams. And in your weaker subjects, you can have someone come in on those days alone to write your exams for you. Those were norms in those days for JAM, for WAEC, for NECO. In a large way, we've been able to cope this. But you still see these things happen during um, the, what they call the GCEs, the mm. NECO GCEs and the WAEC GCEs, the external exams. And you will find out that it is the officials of these exam bodies themselves who now perpetrate this. So yes, the days of the magic centers running, you know, private exam centers where they are free to do whatever they like has passed. But we, now, we are now in the age where the NECO officials are the ones who should be investigating for the roles that they play in all of this. You have weak students coming in, and where they, wherever they've assured those students of magic happening and they fail to deliver, that's how you see it reflect in the results. It's not that, they, that there is a large number of failure does not mean that the larger number of um, strong students have, have been able to come out. What you just had was a failure of the magic system working. Let yeah. me so take this call because, because be I mean, this is, right these, these figures are coming across as really worrisome, but let me hear a few parents. Good morning, are you there? Yes, good morning, Mariah. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Yes, uh, I want to say that this exam my practice thing, we always look at um, the people that are receiving the bribes from the my practice to go on and the parents that are paying for the bribes. Okay, now we're in a, in a country where taxation is going up. But our salaries, the salaries of the people that are receiving these things are not going up. So we are human. There, there, there's, a, there's a tendency to be tempted to do these things. And because they have bills to pay, they have other things. I'm not supporting them, but I'm just saying if we are looking at them receiving it, we should, we should tackle the reason why they are receiving it. Is it that they are underpaid or they are greedy oh. or they... they, they Teachers. They don't just have that self integrity. Thank you. All right. Thank you very There's much. There's no justification. Now we must just start giving excuses because these children that boycott and pay their way through NECO would pay their way through WAEC and they'll become criminals in the long run. You cannot, you can't have a foundation of criminality and now suddenly become upstanding upright citizens. No, there's even what? the side of the, you exposing your child to, to abuse. So usually when a child fails to understand what they need to understand to pass a WAEC, they are unable to pass a job. So you do it for WAEC and JAM or for NECO and JAM, and then the child gets into the university, they have no idea Struggling. what, how many work they need to do. For a law student who has to do four unit courses all the way from your 200 level till you graduate, at least five, four unit courses per, okay, ter, so per se semester, that child is unable to meet up because you need to put in at least eight hours per, per, per day. But for, but my worry reading. now is that now that we have this data, what do we make use of? How do we make use of this data? What's, what can the government do? What can private um, um, companies do? What can we do to fix the problem? How to help the kids? Mm -hmm. How to ensure proper monitoring is being done in that, this examination? What exactly can we do with this data? Three things quickly. Number one is what we are doing already. The NECO having data and then putting up, beefing up security. JAM has even crossed the level of beefing up security. We are now writing on that camera. Number two is parents now. Every child that you have, as, as young as they are from primary, must be able to un read and understand whatever it is they have to write an exam like upon. N those days of where we had a an imbalance of the language of learning, mm. was there was a problem. But now all our children, their first right. language is this English language right. that they read in school. So there's a l level of balance. In those days in my time, I, I could even excuse some of my mm. classmates. Mm. It was the language problem. Let me take one comment from Maria. Go yeah, go ahead. Okay, so for me, immediately it shows us exactly the standard of education right now. Because we've always wondered, you know, sometimes 78 people, pa uh, 78 percent pass or 90 percent pass, and then when you meet these graduates one on one, mm -hmm. and just to communicate with them, you know, you're wondering how people are able to pass. So now we know for sure how bad it is, and then government can start taking the necessary steps it needs to mm -hmm. take for educating our children. Let me properly. take this call. Good morning. Are you there? Hello. Hello. Good morning, sir. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. 
Good morning, Maria yes. and the team. Yeah, yeah uh, I just want to make my um, contributions um, in this um, uh, way. Right. Uh, there are actually two angles to look at this. Mm -hmm. um, first is that the educational system in Nigeria, to some extent, is not uh, what it used to be. Um, I, I think I was speaking with some people um, during the weekend, and I was telling them that there is a need to go back to the way education was run when our parents were going to school, the regional educational system. And then we also need to ensure that government forms these schools, recruit the best hands, get the best teachers. As we speak, the public schools have the best teachers. It is just that the government is not funding these schools enough to get the best out of these teachers. You do not expect me to do my best, you know, in teaching your children or training them. When I am hungry, I cannot feed my family. I am under pressure. A whole lot of things. How do I get to teach your children and put them through the right, you know, studies and all? And secondly, is the fact that we need, just like this, the previous speaker said, we need to look at the ages of our children. I was baffled at a point when my two-year-old daughter was asked to start differentiating at that age, to start, um, you know, writing, differentiating between living things and non-living things at two years. I, I know that if you explain certain things to them, they would understand, but come on, they are still too young for certain right. things. Like Thank that. you. We have to wrap up on this, but I think when I see this data, mm. it's just a reminder again that, listen, not everybody can go to school. Listen, I think it's about time we need to start appreciating the fact that we need to customize mm. education for all of us, mm -hmm. especially in Nigeria, where we are in our development. Yes, yeah, it would be great for all of us to be educated, enlightened, you know, speak well, do all the nice foreign things, but at some, at some point... We need to realize that some of these kids out of secondary school, maybe they need to go and learn a trade. Right. <laughs> maybe they need to go and learn some kind of technical skills. Because maybe temporarily, eventually, they can go back to university. But at this moment, the, the fact that somebody fails shouldn't be the destination. Mm. It should be an indication that you can do something else okay. for now. Because I that, agree with that. But I want to quickly say like this. that when I was growing up, we had a campaign on TV. No born busho, no break pipeline. And I remember that song till today. Why? The song was to raise awareness of people not to vandalize pipelines and the harm that comes to the society when you vandalize a pipeline because you can have an explosion and people will die. We need to have such campaigns that would educate parents and children on the dangers of cutting corners, the impact, because yes. we have to go on a break. When we come back, we'll continue okay. this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So I'm not in any way trying to say it's not important for you to go to school. Mm -hmm. When kids fail, they should try to study and they try to ensure they pass exams. I'm not excusing what happened. The point I'm trying to make is that we are at the point in our country where we need to begin to face reality. Not all these kids are cut out for the university. That was and it's time for us to begin to understand that we need experts. You were talking about plumbing. Mm -hmm. We need experts in, as plum, expert plumbers. We mm -hmm. need who are people who can actually do, be mechanics, specialize in mechanics, people who can actually do vulcanizing. Mm -hmm. So technical. if we begin so these technical this, skills this is and, try to, try to, and try to shed more light and importance mm -hmm. on these skills, mm -hmm. maybe parents can then bring that, realize that, listen, my kids are not doing well in this area, you can actually move them to so it. That's one. And secondly, area. I also feel like parents make these kids go too early into university. So you see a 15-year-old, because she did very well in, in, in secondary school, you're automatically making her do exams to university. Those kids sometimes are too young. Mm -hmm. Allow them to stay back home. So some of these things can be the issues we're having, making kids a lot fail of times, in, the issues. in their exams. Uh, because this is basic education, it's not exactly, you think, just as you said, maybe we should start to pipe low on the importance of certain subjects over certain subjects. Certainly. So a child's strength might be English and not maths. And then, you know, the requirement is that you must have maths and English and this and this and that and that to study a particular course. Maybe the areas of a child's strength is where the school advice should, should be. Okay, I, for instance, was good in sciences in my junior secondary. Mm. And I was advised to tow the science line. But I knew my weakness was maths. I knew I couldn't do well with the numbers. So I didn't bother to waste my time. I just quickly found my way into arts. And I wrote myself because I needed a parent's consent to change that line the school advice, had, um, counselor had advised. 
I wrote it myself. I signed it myself and went to give the school by myself because I knew my father was insisting, I'm an engineer, my children must do sciences, but my strength wasn't in maths. Right. So maybe so, we should start to advise children along their strength. Yeah. Every child, every child is a book child. Mm. Is the book that they are, they are giving them that might not be their okay. own book. Okay. All right. So around. for me, what is really happening here is just a reflection of what's happening in our society as a whole. And we've taken our corruption to the exam, you know, to the exam children. hall and to our children. And for me, because of the numbers we're talking about here, so I think it's too early to say that some people are not cut out for school. The number is just too, um, too large, you know. We need to put things in place properly in our schools. We need to have more teachers. We need to have more educated and trained teachers. We need to have better schools. We need to have better ways of educating our children. And then we need to take away the importance of certificates over lessons, over learning how to you know, over learning the subjects, learning how to be a student, how to understand things. Because some people are not very good at doing writing exams. So you find a student who is very good during, schools, um, during the school year, doing very well in their tests, but when it comes to exams that they, f you know, they fail. Mm -hmm. So there has to be maybe different ways to test our children these days. Mm -hmm. And we need to find a way to punish people for when they are caught doing this. Because the only because Tokwa was saying something about impact, we need to tell them the impact it has on society. But when you do not punish people, there's no impact. Mm. So they'll Let keep doing the what they're doing. Good morning, are you there? Hello, good Hello. morning. Yes, thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, Mr. John. Call it for okay. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Yeah. The two things I want to contribute to this your program, I'll be following you before this while. Number one, one, one thing I want to say is, let there be a man, at least, at least two men among you people, the women is a suggestion. It will help to balance most of the statement and all that. Then, concerning the issue of exam and all that. I don't know if you can hear me. Very yeah. clearly. Yes. But finding the issue of exam and all that, nowadays we find out that the parents we have at a time like this, they want to live the life of their children for them. Mm. So in other words, when the children are in school, they want to be the I'm not going to put it, whether the teacher, the instructor, and everything. And they want the school to become a family kind of life. Hello? Sorry, I think we lost, think we lost I'm sorry, please try to call that, back. I wanted to say <clears> that, <throat> see the challenge of this, um, this entire examination or practice process, aside from the fact that we over glorify um, the certificates, is that we, we've limited the capacity, we've, we've boxed up children into being unintelligent. Mm. Every child can be <laughs> intelligent. Every child can master a course if they put their heart to it. I struggled a bit. I, I, I did well in secondary school and I go into the university system and I just didn't understand what was going on. I just didn't understand the um, process of learning in school where we don't read throughout the school and then we read two nights to the examination. Mm -hmm. It didn't work for me. I am, I, in the past three years, I've now taken a personal journey of studying psychology. I love it. I know why I'm studying it. I see the effects it's having on me. I am enjoying a process of reading things that are terminology that are huge. But if you had put, if you had given me psychology when I was in university, I probably wouldn't have been able to study it. So sometimes we need to have conversations with our children to understand why they are doing. Many kids are just forced to do what they want to do. They're not that, that what they are doing. They didn't want to do it. If you ask them, do you really want to write jam or convince them why they should study for it? Any child can pass jam. Any child can pass neko if they just study. There is nobody that does not have the capacity to comprehend mm -hmm. if they study in the way they can get it. Yeah. So parents now feel my child is not getting it, and immediately they push them into let me help you to do it, okay. and thereby weakening the capacity to overcome that challenge and the other child is always faced to cutting corners. Let me take corners. this call from mm -hmm. Duty. Duty, are you there? Good morning, Beauty. Beauty. Thanks for calling. Are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Good You're morning. Live. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And the ladies? Good morning. Think, uh, the issue at hand is that um, we mothers, we contribute a lot to, to this yes, thing. Thank you. It's just that we, we, we now want to do everything for our children. Mm -hmm. We are asked, during our days, we do these things ourselves. Now you see a child, even when they give assignments at, at school, they want to complete the assignment is too much. So as a result, we over pamper the children. As so as when you pamper them from the early stage to the, to the, to the secondary stage, you make them relax too much, 
And when it's time for exam, they don't know when to be serious. So this archaeopathy should be taken care of. <laughs> so that we that we were had when, when our parents were breaking us up. So how come all of a sudden we want to become, we, we, we just want to overpamper those children. So the children are not controlling us. So mm. the end result is what we are saying. Thank you very uh, much, let, Beauty. Let me just add to what Beauty said. So this for me, I feel, is the elite issue where also we want our children to finish at a certain age. Mm. So we have put different ages for when our child will finish primary school, secondary school, so that we can boast and say, you know, my child is in university and it's only 15, you know. Meanwhile, all the other things are so important, like their maturity, it's all, you know, you don't take it seriously. So that's another thing. Okay. We, we have to wrap up on this. Let me let you come in. So the last one is don't leave your, don't correct your mistake through your child's life. Mm. So most of us, we couldn't understand English. I personally, in a pigeon with the speaker when we were growing up and reading, and interpreting to English. I still do it when you talk to me. I transcribe and translate. So these kids now, this is their own time. Their first language is English, and they do understand the languages well. Why not just allow them and trust them that they will do it well? Those days, our people had to cut corners. They did, and because you know there was this language difference. And also, maybe your child's studying style is different from yours. Mm -hmm. Personally, when I study, I lie down. My child now, I'm forcing her to sit at a table, and I'm yeah, thinking we'll, she's... We'll, so child we'll study discuss their different how, how to help the children yes. going forward. We have to so run have, Let's take a little bit. Abdulaziz um, Abdurrahouf says, we need to discourage the idea that everyone must be a graduate, have masters and PhD. All those certificates are everywhere now. What values do they add marginally? We need to have a reward system that will prioritize people that learn craft and other trades. Unfortunately, that's all we can take. Let's go on a break now. We come back. Hopefully, we can start our Let's Talk. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. So recently, the Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, announced the membership of a 56-man steering and constitution review committee. According to report, the composition comprises of principal officers and one senator from each state and two senators selected to represent each geopolitical zone in the country. Now, we're going to have in a, a barrister a bit later to enlighten us more on this. Um, he's on his way out here. He's stuck in traffic. But in the meantime, we'd like to hear your thoughts on this committee to do this constitutional review. You can call us on 70 You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourVTVC so we can read your tweets. Okay, so when I saw the story, I was a bit worried because unless my memory fails me, we had a whole national confab on this same matter. And, it's, and I'm thinking, what exactly was the objective? Again, that was going to be my first question to our guest, but he's not here yet. But before he gets here, I'd like to hear what you would like as a Nigerian, as a citizen, as an as a average Nigerian. What would you like for them to review in the Constitution? What are those areas you feel that we need changes and they need to begin to consider? Uh, Tokwe, I'd like to go with you because I know that you have some issues. Yes. Um, I feel that every, oh, you, you, one of the biggest challenges I feel with our political leaders, our government, our people in political office is that they become so estranged from what is going on mm. in the society. And if you don't wear the shoe, I would always scream concerning our health sector. I probably can't talk much about the educational sector because I'm not wearing that shoe. But well, imagine if my kids had to go to a public, public school and, I had to ex and they had to experience it, I would be able to scream on it. What I scream on is public health. Public health is bad. The hospitals are not equipped. The hospitals are not, they're not well paid. We don't have enough staff because I've worn that shoe. I've, it has pinched me. I've given birth in the general hospital. I've seen the stress doctors go through. I've seen how ill-equipped the place is. No serving political office holder can understand the experience every Nigerian goes through unless their life is in the hands of an overworked doctor around 10 p.m. who is who you are screaming to come and save my life and is trying to save five people's lives at the same where time. Is the constitutional review here? So if the constitution makes it compulsory right. for political office holders, because unless unless they they are feeling it, they can't, you know, if it <laughs> makes it compulsory for them to experience the general hospital system, yes, the public schools, health yes. and the school system. We would see rapid increase in implementation of positive policies mm. in our health sector and education. They need to feel it. If they don't, 
So any policy that still keep, gives them that freedom to have that life, where they are on that side where they don't see what's going on, and they say, these people just like shouting. <laughs> but wait, wait. No, wait they, yeah, I hear that. Mm. But do we see them as individuals, as Nigerians also? They are, they all, they, they, you, know, you earn salary. Yes, you earn from the government. Mm. But many of them also are private people who have earned, had their own companies. Mm. So are you saying that revenue profits from the companies that actually that is legitimate mm. shouldn't be used to take their kids to anywhere well, in the country. That no, leadership, no, question. leadership is about sacrifice. Yeah. When you become a public office holder, you should so know what that you're saying that is that there is the fact that I have a functional business, that should be put aside. If you can't do focused. it, if you can't uh, sacrifice, no, then don't run for office. No, Let someone no, who is okay, willing to make taken. the sacrifice no, run for yeah. office. For me, I think it's the evolution of how the restructuring. I think it's important that Nigeria looks to this. We need to find a way to make our states each individual state be strong enough to provide education, health for their community, whether we like it or not, they are closest to the people. The federal government, as it is, is always broke. I mean, you're borrowing left and right. You cannot afford to carry the whole country anymore. So we should look into that. The policing, all these things are important things that we should look at. And that's what I hope. I think they had discussed it in 2014. Yeah. So I think it's something they should just adopt going yeah. forward. But each region becomes independent. Yes, yes. Another thing, yeah, go ahead. Some of the last amendments, some of the things that we thought would make it through that didn't, at least the 35% affirmative uh, for, women. for women, didn't make it through at the Senate, but made it through at the House of Reps. And so we couldn't get it completely amended in the law, but we had the not, not too young to run, and that one worked like magic for a lot of people. We, we failed in the areas, like Miriam mentioned, of decentralizing this, our resource areas exclusive, exclusive on that from the exclusive list so all natural resources and mineral resources across the country are still within the federal government and then we cannot blame Zanfara for allowing their gold pass back door to go because yeah. their state governor who is sitting as yeah, the head God. of security in the state has no power to to mine it or even do anything about it mm -hmm. so it's just looking and they, and they constantly are digging and taking away mm -hmm. the gold we have um, uh, a quiet bomb for instance who gets yes? They get uh, the highest because yeah. of the, but then they cannot access gold. Uh, I'm sorry, gas the, and generate power through it you know, because of course sad. it's still with the federal government. That's we weird. have areas you like that. Osho is, is sitting on gold mm. and is a broke state because the governor still has to wait for federal government who cannot mine everything. We need to allow these state governors access to the things within their states and arrange a royalty or something that you know that goes to the yeah. central. My worry is you must have central power. I know that states are allowed to have. I think is it ten? <coughs> is, it, is it ten or so? Um, well, uh, I think the recent states. amendment allows them because before what the issue we had is not comma, they can't commercialize. So the Lagos states could generate but they and they can't only they can't commercialize. They can't sell to Ikeja. Right. So let's have Ikeja. Ikeja Disco owns Ikeja Disco, generates from Ikeja mm -hmm. and serves Ikeja, and then you can have somebody from Lekki generate from Lekki and serve Because Lekki. the issue we're having is the fact that we have to wait for the transmission even companies to for all water. the pipes. Yes, even, 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 even um, petrol. Mm. The issue is that let the Modular region, refineries. let the regions that have the, 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 Imagine the, the, the natural resources, resources you, you, natural actually resources refine, refine their, their, their petrol. Your mountains, your waterways, not being within your control. So a Taraba cannot control the water. water and everything that is around it. Lagos is asking every time the governor is going to the federal to get some kind, some, some form of license, some, some of form of special status to be able to access better resources within Lagos. But you know, so that's what, one, anyway, that's we have to go on a break. We have to that because one of the things I like to ask our guests is, we, we had a true federal system back that's in the in days the when we start, when we started off. Mm -hmm. What happened? Military. military. What exactly? Military so if it was, was military, so exactly how do we now get back to the point where we, because there's an issue of trust, mm. that people feel that if we give everybody the individual powers, they feel that there can be a situation where they can overthrow the center. And we have to find a way to around that, that mentality. Let's go on a break. When we come back, hopefully our guests will be here. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So we have with us our, our guest. He's a lawyer, Barrister Odiana Eriata. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Good to have you on. You can call us on 70 You can also tweet us at TVC Connect. It's hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. Okay, the question I wanted to ask you initially was, as a result of what um, Athene Ferry had said, Duma King had said that this is a waste in futility. This is a, this, this in, these efforts are going to be futile because there has, there's a comfort report which all they need to do is implement it. And why are they wasting their time constituting this 56-man committee? Do you agree that this is a waste of time? Well, ordinarily, uh, I will agree with uh, Mr. Dumak in that it's a waste of time. But do not forget that before the last confab, the president leadership, that is the government of APC, did not effectively participate in the confab process. So uh, to some extent, or to a very large extent, it will be justifiable on their part to say, okay, we're going to set up a committee to review the constitution. So to that extent, it will be difficult to say it is a waste of time. Why so, can't they go and review that document, this committee, review that document? Well, essentially, that the APC-led government criticized every step that was taken by the Israel government. Right. And as such, whatever come out of it, whether good or bad or whatever, they, you know, they have to somehow undermine it. But do not forget, the hypocrisy involved in governance is that um, some of those materials or the resolutions that was passed in that confab form some of the resource material that are being used by the National Assembly exactly. as of today, yeah, even the government of today. Yeah. I think it's out of pretense to say oh, we do not want to do anything with that constitution or review or that confab other than set up um, Another committee but I feel to review that, the host of uh, again was being mischievous, considering that the CONFAB had no legal backing and it was a popular uh, a consensus out there that everybody knew that the CONFAB was created without a, a, a base. And this is the National Assembly. We have voted them in. These people have the legal backing to amend and review our constitution. So shouldn't they just look at the CONFAB results That's the point I was trying to make. and now That's legalize it? The, the missing no link was that they, were not, that they didn't have one a legal backing. They not have a legal yes, backing. Yes, this the, one has. The, so the, why is it a waste of time? It, it wasn't a waste of time. Because I recall the caliber of persons or Nigerians who participated yeah. in that CONFAB. Yeah. For instance, the likes of Femi Falano and a lot of them were part and parcel of that uh, last uh, CONFAB. Okay. So it's really difficult because uh, some of us had the privilege of having leading insight of the resolutions of that confab. And they are quite detailed. Yeah. Mm. I think what they should do now, um, they cannot just pick it up and so mm. we are legalizing it or making it part of the constitution without reviewing some of those things, because some of them were not part and parcel yeah. of the, the, issue the, of the PIB, review process. The, the, the issue of the PIB was also very, um, was one of the major things that was agreed during the confab. Right now, I know the House had said, told us the next six months, they're gonna do everything to pass this PIB bill. In your view, is that one of the things that we should look at in this 56-man committee? Should they ensure that they pass um, this bill? Yes, I, I think the 56-man committee should look at the, the PIB uh, uh, bill because for a very long time, I think that is almost becoming an arbitrary of the National Assembly. The, the, the bill has been whittled down that you and I do not even know the effect yes. Yes. of the bill at the end of the day. Yes. But whatever <laughs> it's worth, let us have the bill on the table, let it be passed. Let Nigerians see, oh, yeah. this is what I've been cooking for the past two, three, or National Assembly, or, as the mm -hmm. case may be. Right. So it has to be tinkered with. Okay. Uh, the Constitution had made it, or had empowered the National Assembly by virtual session A, session 9, and all that, to amend the Constitution. And if you look at the process of amendment, session, nine, session A, session 9, and all that, you need for fifth of the constitution of the National Assembly to amend the constitution. And if you look at the other provisions of the constitution, you really do not need for fifth, you need to third. So for some of these major issues, I think they need to be, they have to be a holistic issue. Okay. Don't, don't, yeah. don't, don't, so you right. must also agree with us. Right. Right. It's not just the petroleum industry being. Mm -hmm. The issue of state police and all that has mm -hmm. to be looked at. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think they should give the committee a chance. I think you sort of answered my question, the question I'm about to ask, which is, if we have administrations coming and say we're not fully involved in you know, being part of a constitutional review, at what point can we say it's been done so that another administration does not come in and start a whole process altogether? At what point will Nigeria know that this is done and the next step is to implement it? 
I'm sure that is why this committee has been set up. Once the National Assembly, this committee reviewed this, and it is made, made available to the National Assembly, the various committees looked at it, and it is passed by the you know, necessary to third or fourth fifth of the National Assembly based mm -hmm. or depending on the you know, aspect of the Constitution they intend to review. At that point, it becomes difficult for subsequent government or regime to say we're not part of this. Mm -hmm. Jonathan's regime, for reasons best known to him, let us also not forget that it was um, very close to the elections. So to some extent, they never had that time or the political will to you know, give it the legal seat that it deserved. Mm -hmm. But now we have a government in place. I think they should be given the opportunity to do what they ought to do so that subsequent government will not say, oh, we're not part of this again, and it should be undermined. Okay, so for me, um, I've gone through a bit of the conf confab reports and people on Twitter have been saying, okay, this is what we want, the policies we want to implement, what, what we want to change in the law. Before you came in, the ladies were already discussed that, okay, we want there to be devolution of power. Do you see this government able, do you see this committee able to push such grand um, change in our constitution as strong as devolution of power? where we now have the center weak and then the state Let me add strong. to that, because I was, I was talking about the issue of trust. There's always this issue that, can we trust for the regions to be that strong, mm -hmm. such that the center becomes so weak? In your view also, to, to add to the top of this question, do you think we can actually overcome this issue of trust? Mm -hmm. I do not believe this government <laughs> has the full mind to infect the devolution of power. Yes, that was part of their, their manifesto. That was part of their campaign. Like politicians would say, it was mere do. manifesto and mere campaign. Hmm. But in other civilized climb, of course, today some of us criticize Trump and all that. But what he's doing now was actually what he promised them during the campaign that he was going to do. But in this part of the world, campaign policy uh, promises and all that are not actually what they do when they come to office. This government that we know, promises. I do not think. Yes, they promised us they were going to do fiscal federalism, restructuring, and all that. I do not believe this government had a political power, hmm. will, to do it. Yes, this committee has been set up, but I do not think. Because the danger, or for them, the concern, not the danger, is that what happened before the Biafra war? Don't forget that, yes, we had a fantastic regional government. But after the war, people now look back and felt, oh, there had to be a unitary system where the center becomes strong and the regions become weak. That, again, has been counterproductive. For us who are, you know, ordinary Nigerians, we want a system where we have full federalism mm -hmm. to the extent that the center becomes a little bit not too, people will not be too interested in the center. Right. And that will gain a gender development in all the regions and the various right. states. So do you think that it will be priority for these um, committees now to look into community policing? Considering that the past um, house was scared from this, and now we have a Moteko on our hands. We have regional policing surfacing in different camouflage, in different ways in our regions. Is it now going to be priority for this um, um, how, um, Senate committees to look into community police? Now, is it possible that we emerge with a community if, policy? If you group? ask me, if Nigerians at the end of the day must applaud whatever this committee is going to come out with, is to ensure that recommendations are made to infer changes in our constitution to accommodate state policing or regional policing or whatever you call it. There's so much insecurity in the state now that nobody can run away from it. Except we have state police or community police. Okay, you talk about community policing. You cannot have effective community policing <laughs> without a state or regional police. And Muteku is on the table, and there's no way, there's no how you can go, you know, throw it away. For instance, in December 27, 28, 29, I was between Edo, I was between Lagos and Edo. One of my sister-in-law was kidnapped, another brother-in-law, of course, three of them were traveling. Of course, I left Lagos 2 a.m. on the 27th. Go to Benin about 7 a.m. I got some of our siblings who went to state command, right? and they couldn't do anything. All we advice is that. Wait for the phone call. Uh, wait for the phone call. Of course, one of the police officers called me and said, please go and negotiate with that guy, your sister in law. Hmm. There's nothing we can do in this circumstance. So you can then, because they don't know, some of them do not know, and that was the second time I'm having that kind of experience. So for me and for Nigerians who really know what is happening, I think we should encourage 
state policing. These are motor county must be encouraged so that people who are hiding in the bush, and whether you call them bandits or terrorists, whatever name you call them, it will help the system. There's a lot of insecurity in the state, and the only way forward is the state police. So we have states already struggling to pay salaries. <laughs> And many of them, I, Bram Fark said today that a lot of states are sitting on gold mine. They're not just taking advantage of the opportunity available for them because they're getting federal allocation. It goes back to, the, because we might not have the complete devolution of power, but what would you say, what, what would be success from, for, for people to expect from this National Assembly in terms of how to empower states to manage their resources better? Because some of them will say they don't have access to it. Well, some of the states, uh, in all fairness, may not be able to sustain without a federal allocation. Mm -hmm. So what the federal should do, that is why we keep on talking about devolution of power and all that. There's mm -hmm. so much that is being centralized. Mm -hmm. And states too should be, you know, some of the states are not, some of the states are not productive at all. So every policy necessary must be put in place to encourage states to do their internal uh, um, IGRO <laughs> and all that to sustain some of these things that we are agitating for. And you can't do that. If, for instance, everything is centralized, whatever is generated is being pushed to the center, it will not help us in ensuring security. It will not help us. Yes, we are talking about state policing. You need to pay them. Mm -hmm. You know, so. so. I have another question, which is about women. And it seems mm -hmm. that sometimes when women come, women's issues come on the table, we flick them away. And, you know, me and my colleagues were just discussing before you came in that uh, the bill to ensure that women are well represented, about 35%, mm -hmm. didn't seem to have made the last um, constitutional. constitutional review. And we're wondering if this is something they'll be looking to. Well, we, we, um, <laughs> we <laughs> hope that I'm sure you will be wondering why I'm asking. <laughs> yes. I, I think I appreciate that that will also be uh, tinkered with. A um, few days ago, we were at the NBA um, meeting, and I will not call her feminist, I will not call her whatever, but one of those who ordinary will always agitate for women. Mm -hmm. Any committee that I set up, she will, you know, mm -hmm. of course, she's calling for 50 50 okay. and all that. So, I think the idea of 35% is not bad. So the committee should also look at that because if you look at the percentage of women in the system, of course the voters, for those people or those of us who are you know, the street politics, you know that women actually constitute a very large um, well, percentage of voters. So mm. it has to be looked into. One of my major worries is the caliber of people that actually make up this National Assembly. Um, recently <laughs> we saw a lawmaker who got his wife while, while being uh, and 27 was being voted children are counted. Yeah. Talk about 27 children. You see, these are the kinds of people that we have. Now, I don't, I'm not, I don't expect much from these guys. I don't expect a lot of um, intelligent reviews from these, from some of them. Some of them are actually, they deserve to be there. They are top notch. But when you have certain states that have certain kind of representatives, it worries me that we might not get that consensus because you have the confab of these great people. But yes, they were able to reach a consensus. Now, so that, that's why everybody's saying go back to the CONFAB report. Because now we have a National Assembly full of people, people that are totally different. People like this uh, lawmaker with 27 children, among, amongst others. How do I expect that this kind of man will ensure a 35% for affirmative, affirmative action for women? How would I ensure that this kind of person would resolve, would talk about issues of population control? You know, those are areas that I don't, so I ha, I'm really fearful of this, this 56 man committee. Who are they made up, made up of? And what are their interests? Hmm. Uh, well, I know it's a difficult question. It's, like it's, a it's, no, question. It's, it's actually very difficult because Nigeria is um, a very diverse country, diverse in all, um, in all every material particular. Hmm. Of course, I saw that video trending and I was not really too uh, surprised. We have a big challenge, and uh, that question is really very difficult for me. Mm. But I think the 15 man committee will look at all the materials, all the resolutions that have been passed in the past. Because they have a representative from each state, they have a and then I have from two from each region, and then I have all the principal officers. I just so, make so at this point, criteria. what can we do as um, citizens in our own different constituencies to make sure that our representatives do the right thing? Considering that. For instance, people in Kano that um, Ado Dogua represents can always say to him, your 27 allies is a lot for us. You've contributed a problem. 
and demand that he does the right thing. How can we now do that, take that demand forward? It's about raising the you know, advocacy has to be raised. Uh, I wouldn't say we don't have, we have some very civilized people from that part of the country, mm -hmm. intelligent Definitely. people. So those of us from the other parts or every other part in the country should raise, because uh, I have seen the, it was, that action was actually condemned by you know, yeah, so many sessions, including mm -hmm. those from the north. Including the speaker. Let me take this call. call. Sorry to cut you, I have to take on this call. Good morning, thanks for calling, are you there? Hello, yes. Morning, very quickly, Hello. go ahead please. Yes, you're live, go ahead please. Hello? You're live. Go ahead, please. Welcome to the show. Okay, my name is Eugene. Yes, sir. Go uh, ahead. Come with me. I'm come, calling from Maryland. Okay, Good go morning. Ahead. Morning, mm -hmm. sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah um, program, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of your program, your view. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mm. Please, keep it up. Thank but you, sir. What I want to say is that no matter the constitution, if you are making this, they should put things in the right perspective. Nigeria said, this government said that we will fight corruption. Now, in this presentation, this presentation, we have most corruption ever. Here and there, both ports, in gold, there, before trail and load, 100,000, here and there. But what I want to say, we have to do things right. People now, they disengage from work. They have to go to court, in just court. Many cases are there. They won't pay them. How can you get a right to sign it? Why never treat your citizen right? And Nigeria, God have made this country a very good place for us. We're supposed not to rush to America or to any place. They are supposed to rush from yeah. here. Right. Three. Thank you very much, sir. So we have to round up, but I'd like, you, I'd like to ask the final question of... We talk have made this country a very good place for us. We're supposed not to rush to America or to any place. They are supposed to rush from yeah. here. Right. Three. Thank you very much, sir. So we have to round up, but I'd like, you, I'd like to ask the final question of, we've talked about PIB, talked about the evolution of power, talked about uh, um, the issues of um, mm. affirmative ac action, talked about um, regional independence through federalism. What other areas do you think would you like for them to touch on, on with this, on this committee? Well, I, I think the committee should also look at the, uh, the non-justiciability of chapter two. As a lawyer, I, I think it's something they must actually look at because, Attempts were made by those who made the, um, the enforcement of fundamental rules in 2009 to smuggle in a lot of stuff to see how citizenship, citizens will be able to uh, seek redress when it has to do with the basic needs, you know, housing, education, and all that, and all that. I, I think that area really needs to be tinkered with to ensure that the citizens have right to seek redress or push the government when it comes to some of those basic needs as you know, you know, contained in the Constitution. And again, the issue of uh, the dual personality of the um, uh, Federal Attorney General as the Minister of Justice and also the Attorney General, those are very salient issues we also need to look at. And finally, like I also started with, issue of security. If Amotekun or state police or regional police is what will help this country, I think that is a major thing because once we have a secured environment. I can tell you we're going to make more progress. Fantastic. All right. Thank you very much, sir, for coming. Thank I you. appreciate it. Hope you've been able to understand a few things. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a fabulous day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.